Hello guys and welcome back to another video. About a couple weeks ago, I saw Godzilla vs. Kong in an actual movie theater and it was really good to be back. But today, I want to talk about my thoughts on the movie divided into two sections. First will be a non-spoiler section for anyone who didn't watch the movie and wants to just hear my general thoughts without learning any details that could ruin it for them. And then secondly, if you did watch it, I'll have a spoiler section, so if you want to compare what you thought and you know what happened, that's going to be the place for you. Like and subscribe if you do enjoy, and let's get into it. <coughs> now for my general and non-spoiler thoughts about the movie. I overall thought that it was pretty good. It may have a bit of an edge since it was the first movie I watched back in a real movie theater, and that was a good experience because I definitely missed that. But it was easy to follow along, and I didn't feel like I needed to watch the other movies to understand. I only watched the original Godzilla since then, and I jumped right into this one, and they told you enough that you knew what was going on, but not too much that you couldn't just enjoy it and see where it goes and have just a bit of mystery. The movie looks spectacular, and it really allowed me to see them as actual creatures instead of just CGI monstrosities. And this was one of the main factors that allowed a non-avid viewer to really see it as a world and really get into it. Because without that, if the movie just looked like trash, all you'd notice is what's bad about the monsters, instead of really focusing in on the story and what's happening between them. And that's the main part of this movie, so if you weren't be able to do that, it would really fall flat. The human characters felt pretty mediocre. I didn't really have much attachments to them. I was really fine if they got crushed by a giant lizard toe or a big monkey fist, but they did their job and they moved the plot along without stealing too much of the show. Like you could jump around from each of their point of views and back to the monsters without getting bored. They gave you enough of the monster stuff that you didn't feel like the humans were overrunning the show and they weren't too boring that you just got lost in their stories and then forgot about the monsters ever existing, which is a really nice balance to keep a good pace to this film. And of course, finally, the main event, the fights between Godzilla and Kong. These really showcase each creature's weaknesses and strengths through their different environments and locations, which provided different challenges for each character, making it not seem just like a one-sided fight, like each one really had a chance to bring it there all. I'm not going to mention exactly what happens, because of course that would spoil it, but I was happy with who won, and it made sense logically to me, which I think is something that we should try to do instead of giving someone the edge by something stupid. And I'll explain that later if you actually watch the movie, which we're getting into right about now. I'm going to talk right about off the bat about the winner of the fight between Godzilla versus Kong, which was clearly Godzilla. And I think this was the right decision, because you take a giant ape with no powers or anything special about him except he's really big, and you take him against a nuclear-powered giant lizard with big crushing jaws, sharp claws, and immense body strength, plus a giant tail to whip him right around. I mean, the fight's a little unfair, and this is why, about in the midpoint, he gets the MacGuffin of the story, or the axe. And if he was to win with this axe, I wouldn't like that, because the only way he was able to win was with an extra power-up, which Godzilla didn't have. I know one thing about the last movie, King of the Monsters, is that at one point, Godzilla went atomic, like he actually became a nuke. And imagine if we had Kong with his measly battle axe that can deflect Godzilla's atomic breath up against a literal nuke. And that monkey, as you saw in the movie, easily got cut up by the laser beam. Imagine if a nuke goes at him. He's an animal. He'll die in an instant. Only Godzilla can survive that because he's built for that situation. And this is why King Kong's already at a disadvantage. And I don't hate King Kong. I just think Godzilla is better, and also I'm a dinosaur nerd, so that explains my bias. Before watching, my friends and I discussed what we thought was going to happen, and I correctly predicted that this was going to be a team-up movie, similar to Captain America Civil War and Batman v Superman, of course. 
the twist villain being Mechagodzilla, I also predicted because it was a, not a long time before they put the mechanized version of the giant lizard himself in a movie where the technology has aged so much since they had to adapt to fighting giant monsters. And in this case, I'm actually very happy about how Godzilla was presented against Mechagodzilla. I am perfectly fine with Godzilla being less powerful than his robot counterpart. This is because the robot counterpart doesn't have to recharge his beam. He keeps going on forever with the power source that Godzilla gave him. And also, he has, feels no pain as a robot, so he can keep going despite any injuries. He'll keep fighting till the end, and Godzilla and Kong will slowly wear down. And this makes the fight even more harrowing for Godzilla, since he al already fought and defeated Kong before that point, and now he had to fight a equal but more powerful at the moment lizard creature made of pure metal. There is one issue I've seen a couple other people bring up. There's this guy called Filmento, which talks about how the motives of Godzilla and King Kong clash, but then are suddenly dropped so they could go and be peaceful with each other. But I actually disagree with this. I think Godzilla knew that King Kong wasn't his big threat the entire time, and really just fought him to put him out of the fight so he could go on and fight Mechagodzilla, the actual target of his destruction across Florida and the other Apex bases in the movie. Kong only became a problem when he tried to lead the people to Hollow Earth, which is another big plot point of this movie, and that made him shoot his beam down, which activated the area around Kong's throne to collect Godzilla's stuff, giving the Apex creators exactly what they needed to bring Mechagodzilla to full capacity. It's fine if I disagree with someone on a certain part of the movie, but that's just the way I perceived what was happening. I do want to talk about one final thing, which is how each monster is portrayed throughout the movie. In the beginning, they really push hard that Godzilla has turned into a villain, though I'm guessing from the other two movies that he's proven himself to be just someone who wants to keep the peace and equalize the world from the powerful monsters that live among him. And for Kong, they kind of portrayed him as a savior figure, being the only link between humans and monsters, being a giant ape himself. And this was really shown through the little girl touching his giant finger, similar to that painting where God's touching whoever. I forgot who he was, but it's a famous painting. I'll put a picture of it in the video so you understand what I'm talking about if you don't already know what it is. But this, over time, slowly just went away. And once they finally realized Godzilla wasn't the main threat, they just kind of dropped that all together, which I think that's just a choice for the movie to put some tension. While it was kind of annoying in the beginning as you thought they were leading up for Kong to win, seeming how they were kind of rooting for him most of the time, I think it was just a stylistic point to really add in why they think Godzilla is such a villain and why they brought out Kong to finally find something to stop him. Well guys, that's going to do it for my thoughts. If you do have any of your own, comment that down below, but without too much detail since I don't want to ruin it for anyone else who's just trying to watch what I have to say, and I don't think that would be nice since I kind of want to keep it really hidden myself so I don't reveal anything to someone and spoil anything, because that sucks when it's done to you. If you did enjoy, hit the like button and subscribe. I'm going to have more movie reviews coming soon because I just watched Captain Marvel for the first time, but also more gaming commentary and some theories to throw in into the mix. With that, like and subscribe if you did enjoy, and see you guys next time.